Hey guys, it's Magnet here, and uh, I'm going to actually kick off a new bit of a series that I'm going to do, which is basically a really generic, not generic, but a question and answer session with me, just to kind of provide a little bit more interactivity between myself and you guys. Um, and this was kind of inspired by people who leave comments on my videos, and uh, they ask me questions and stuff like that. I usually answer most of them. But uh, I, I'm limited to very few characters and obviously can't explain it in the type of detail that I would like a lot of the time. So I'm kind of farming some of those questions and turning them into a question and answer series that I can talk to you guys with. So uh, let's give it a try and see how this goes. And if people are interested in the series, I'll keep up stuff like this, but mostly I just kind of wanted to create points of discussion. So. Uh, I'm gonna bring up my webcam here and show you guys the can the uh, the questions that come up. So we'll just go ahead and get into it. So I uh, got a question here from a guy named Hussem Fossi. I'm sorry if I'm totally butchering that name. Basically asking if their APM is uh, high enough or if they should be faster after playing for a while. Um, what I'm gonna say to that is whenever you play a new game. Uh, the, the game mechanics and stuff are really hard to get down and if you can watch pro players and compare yourself to pro players you're probably never going to be as fast as a pro player uh, so I would say just work on trying to do tasks faster and just getting more and more used to the controls and uh, just just do your best like you don't need to worry too much about being as fast as somebody that you know just kind of do your best and kind of get up to a point where you feel comfortable and you can play the game and have fun because that's what really matters. But if you're really looking at improving, then yeah, Im improving your speed is going to be a big deal. But I mean, there's only so much you can really do to force yourself to be faster. Just try to do things repeatedly and kind of cut out the inefficiency as, as you go. But I don't think that you should be uh, too hard on yourself after only playing for a month. Um, it takes a long time to get used to stuff, so just just kind of keep playing and, and see how things go. So let me jump into the next one here. A lot of people ask me this. A lot of people ask me if I coach, and um, I don't. Not really. It's partially because I just really don't have the time. But um, I'm thinking about it. So we'll just keep it at that. I'm I'm really thinking about it right now, and uh, it would obviously need to be something that I could schedule out. Um, I would probably need to charge money for it because I get this question a lot and I hate to do stuff like that because a lot of times coaching honestly isn't worth it. And a lot of people get it into their head that if they get coached by a pro that they're going to get so much better. And I've sat in on coaching sessions with some of my friends that decided to do it. And I'm not going to name names or anything like that because that would be supremely BM. But uh, basically when they sat them through a coaching session they kind of just taught them how to use builds and they taught them what they should be doing in this build and that's not really fair because the build that they were teaching them kind of died out shortly afterward and it was super hard and I get what they were trying to do they were trying to make them run a harder build just to kind of get them used to having to work really hard to get results which will make it easier later but I, I didn't like the way they coached. I've done some coaching casually in the past, but I don't know. I'm not a firm believer in in coaching really getting people better, but I do understand people's want for the interactivity from people that they know. Um, so I, I kind of I put as much information out there as possible in my videos. So if you really want information about whatever, just look it up in my playlist and chances are you're going to get more information than you wanted out of those videos and regardless of who you get coached through they'll probably want to charge you for an hour worth of coaching and just what you might need to learn might not be said in that hour so for now I'm going to say no but I do get people asking me this a lot so I'll think about it okay this is a weird question um, by the way uh, you can see that this is where the uh, origin of the comment is coming from and this is how the comments look on my page but this person's asking uh, how they're supposed to set up control groups they say I have five zerglings on control group number one and five banglings on number two I want to select them all without adding them to group number three I don't want to select them by mouse because for example there are a bunch of ultralists running around what do I do I think this is an example of somebody really overthinking the uh, 
the the control group thing like you should really split up your your things into control groups uh, as you feel necessary and splitting up banelings and zerglings is fine if you're getting into specifically fights with those like if you're getting into banelings zergling wars on both sides it's useful to have them hotkeyed separately but for the most part um, your mechanics should really revolve around what you're comfortable with and I know I talk about separating your, your army out into control groups and stuff like that, but if we're going to be totally honest here, like there are players that just don't hotkey anything, and there are people that just use F2 to select their army, and there's a whole bunch of different styles out there, so uh, you should really go with what you're comfortable with here, and in this circumstance, like, you have, if you have Ultralists and Banelings and Zerglings, there's no reason to separate those, just use them all as one control group, and maybe control and click on your Banelings or something if you're really having a hard time with making sure they get the proper detonations, but I think this was an example of somebody really overthinking that scenario. Uh, let's jump on to the next one. This one says, this was on a comment of my macro video of the series I just released. Basically, uh, I wrote in there that there's a rule that you really shouldn't have more than like 500 minerals and 300 gas at one time, and uh, this, this person makes a good point. And I will do this from time to time in the sense that I go back and kind of correct myself. And they were saying that uh, they like to pull a lot of minerals and gas for a large Muta army just as their Spire finishes. And they say, I'm not sure if this is a good idea since I put out that rule. And uh, they're right. They're right in the sense that there are points where, especially as Zerg, you'll be waiting for your tech to finish to where you can just dump all your money into something all at one time. And that's totally fine. Uh, what I was really trying to focus on with that type of message is saying that if you are in a point in a game where you have maybe like 30 workers and you have a whole bunch of money sitting around, like 700 minerals, then you're in a bad place, to be honest. Uh, you should really be super low on money. You should be spending it on, you know, workers, expansions, uh, production building, stuff like that. And that's the number one reason why people start to fall behind is because they're not spending the money that they earn. Um, and it, so th I guess this person's right in the sense that there are situations where you want to have money ready to go for some reason. But, uh, God, this music is like way too intense for the question I'm answering. <laughs> God, spend your money! But, um, yeah, so... So this person's right in that sense, but for the most part, I'm just trying to make sure you're spending your money accurately. This song's crazy, but I guess we're getting into some intense questions here. So this person asks, uh, one problem they have is they'll get into a fight and focus all their attention on it. However, when they're done with the fight, they have a whole bunch of money, like a thousand minerals, etc. This is kind of going back to the previous question a little bit. And they said, during the battle, should I somewhat abandon the micro and devote my attention to macro, or do I find a way to do both? Lol. Um, I would say that you should really only pay attention to the battle if you really need to. Like, if, if it's a battle that you know is going to win or lose the game right there, then that's probably where you should be focusing your attention. You shouldn't just be like, ah, it doesn't matter, I'll go back and macro. And I know I say that macro is a lot more important than micro a lot of the time. And it's true because people will get into really silly instances with their army where they're microing like seven units and they're not spending their money back at home and they're trying to do everything they can with these seven units but then their home base is kind of falling behind and it's like, what's the point? So um, I, sh I would say that if it's a big important battle then you should definitely focus your attention on it and try to find a way to spend all of your money as soon as it's over and that'll usually be fine for most circumstances. If you really want to set a high bar for yourself, you should try to do both. And this is kind of a pipe dream type of scenario. Very few people can pull stuff like this off. And the first time I ever saw it being done was actually Maru in the WCS Finals. And uh, if you go back and you watch the first person VOD, it was versus Jadong. It, was, it wasn't the WCS Finals from this past year, it was the year before. And I was watching it from home and they were showing a first person camera or not a camera, but a first-person view of what Maru was doing. And uh, Maru was splitting his army and making units back at home at the same time. And it was the most mind-blowing thing I've ever seen in my whole life in terms of StarCraft. Like, the fact that somebody's actually doing something that everyone theorizes that you should do during a game, he was doing it with no problems whatsoever. It was just craziness. But uh, that's what you should 
technically try to shoot for, but I would say uh, just pay attention to the battle, do your best, and if you're really having long, long battles, like four or five, not four or five minutes, but you know, there are some instances where battles can go on for a long time. Say, for example, if you're Terran and you're pushing a third base of a Zerg, you have to continue to make stuff back at home, or otherwise your push is just going to fizzle out and you're going to lose. So that's that's a, a good example of a, p a point where you should be trying to do both, in the sense that if you're just rallying stuff forward all the time, you need to make sure you have stuff constantly rallying uh, during a battle. But otherwise, a lot of battles in the game are really short. I would just try to, try to set up the battle in a way that kind of favors you, and go back home for a few seconds if you can possibly afford it, because rarely are there battles that you really need to devote 100% of your attention to for a long period of time. So it's kind of a long answer, but it, I guess hopefully it came out in a way that makes sense. Okay, so this person says, in silver right now, am I better off, better off saying screw early game harassment and then focusing on a building a massive freaking army until I have that part reflexive to muscle memory? I can set up a harass pretty well, but when I do both, it tends to fall apart until the infrastructure is strong. This is a perfect example of exactly what I want people to be thinking about when they're choosing builds and when they're playing games. Um, a lot of builds that you'll see at the pro level will open up with a handful of units, say like a few Reapers, a few Hellions, whatever. And they'll go out there and they'll try to kill workers and stuff like that. The only reason this works at the pro level is because they are capable of doing all the harassment without losing units and they're capable of making all their workers and making buildings and stuff like that at the same time. And it's actually pretty hard to do that, so it's much more worth it to definitely say, forget the early game harassment, I'm just going to focus on getting all of my infrastructure up as soon as humanly possible without any interruptions, and if you're in a lower league and trying to decide between the two, you're going to go a lot further by focusing on what's going on at home. Um, people really need to understand that if you're ever going to do any type of harassment or any type of small battle that's not intended to win the game, the only reason that that is a thing is because it's designed to keep you on pace while slowing down the pace of the other player. And if you don't keep up that pace back at home by way of making workers and buildings and stuff, then there's no point. There's just literally no purpose. You might as well have just not done anything rather than try to put yourself in a bad position where maybe if your harassment fails and you don't do things back at home, you have, you're have you all of a sudden behind. Uh, so that's kind of silly uh, that a lot of people do get that into their head that they want to do harassment type of builds, but then they forget to do everything else that makes the harassment build worth it. So, yeah. I know I talk about that stuff in the video too, but it seems like people still uh, aren't quite totally clear on the con concept. This is a follow-up question by the same person to the same thing, and he said, that said, what is a good way to handle harassment? If I'm left alone to macro in peace, I can usually do reasonably well, but harassment usually cripples me so badly I just end up GG. Got any vids for that kind of thing? Um, not really. Uh, harassment's more so about, or rather dealing with harassment is more so about your ability to manage kind of hectic situations. And first and foremost, the best way to handle harassment is to know that it's coming. So you should really be trying to analyze what your opponents will do to you in-game and see if you can find ways to figure out what they're doing. So for example, if I was a Protoss and I was fighting a Terran and I saw them making like two gas before a command center or something, that gets pretty obvious it's gonna be for some type of harassment based uh, attack. Considering two gas doesn't really make sense if they're going for a lot of barracks units. Uh, two gas is usually for things like medevacs or banshees which are definitely harassment prone. So then I can change my build to be like, okay well uh, it's pretty clear that he wants to deal some type of damage to me with a lot of tech units, so I need to be aware of that and maybe start getting a lot of units out, say like keeping soccers in packs and getting observers out, stuff like that, until I can figure out what's going on. So definitely knowing what's coming before it's coming is a big deal. Secondly is making sure that you know how to deal with, or, or rather not deal with, but how to position stuff around the map to kind of see harassment coming. Because harassment's always something that comes through the air, right? In the sense that, like, it doesn't... There's not really a way that you can do ground-based harassment unless it's Reapers, and Reapers are usually pretty tame. Um, so if you're getting into things like uh, Banshees or, say, Mutalisks later or something like that, 
then you first and foremost just need to see that it's approaching you. So if you can see it approaching you before it gets to your base, then you already know like, hey, he's coming in from this angle. I can just position my units to intercept it. But um, eventually static defenses are going to be the easiest way to handle any sort of harassment. Particularly as Zerg because it's pretty cheap and it's almost always worth it to get a spore in each mineral line at some point. Uh, for Terran, if you're really having trouble with harassment, you can just put a turret in each mineral line. Protoss isn't as common uh, for putting cannons up, but you can still use your Mothership Core to overcharge your uh, Nexus and kind of be okay in that sense. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess that's those are my general tips for it. I don't really have videos for preventing harassment because um, I don't know why. <laughs> it's been kind of a common thing for people that I've seen at lower levels. They just kind of die to harassment. But I would say, just make sure you know it's coming. If you know where it's coming from, then you can kind of position your units. And if you're really worried about it, or if you really don't know what to do, or if you just kind of want to do a more comfortable and low APM type of solution, just put up a, static, a couple static defenses and try your best to split up your army in places that will equally answer what he's got in each place. Um, if you have more specific instances about how to handle certain types of harassment then let me know like in a, a, a question or whatever and I'll, I'll answer it so okay this was an interesting little thing kind of a let's let's overthink the game a, a little bit let me make sure this is actually showing up properly on my broadcast yeah okay just want to make sure because I'm doing this kind of a ghetto way I don't want to have to edit videos because I think that's really annoying um, so I want to make sure it's showing up and this is kind of a weirder sized question. Anyway, nobody cares about that. This person says multitasking and speed are kind of the same. Reason your brain is not designed to work on different tasks at the same time. It's not a kind of multi-core processor. It can only handle one task at a time. Multitasking in this case means fast switching between the different tasks. Therefore, multitasking and speed are one. Okay, I get what you're saying here in the sense that human brains literally can't do two things at once in the sense that they can't have two fully occupying thoughts at once. But the point I'm getting to with StarCraft multitasking is that um, there's a lot of instances in the game where you you send something off to do something and you just know the timing that will come out with it. So if, if, you're, if you're sitting there making workers and you play the game for long enough, um, you're gonna get to a point where you start a worker and you just forget about it. And your brain later is just like, hey, it's been 17 seconds, it's time to start another worker. And that's just, that just happens over time, where in the sense that your brain is always just like, hey, this seems to be done, this seems to be done. And it's multitasking in the sense that your brain kind of creates a queue of things that need to be done. I don't mean a queue like the letter, a queue is in like, you know, this is a list of tasks that have to be done. And it gets to a point where it's really weird if you think about it. Um, it'll be to the point where if you send out like a drop or a warp prism or something, that's not a concrete time in which it'll start to arrive and you're not paying attention to it or anything but your brain subconsciously will eventually just be like hey this this medevac arrived you have to do something with it or hey your warp prism's there you need to do something with it right now and it's really just kind of building up and and somewhat consciously thinking about the different things that need to be done all the time but i definitely say the multitasking part is making sure your workers are always up because it's not like your eventually over time you're not really going back and actively thinking like hey do I need to make workers your brain just kind of does it on autopilot after a while and that's kinda of what I mean by multitasking the speed part is mostly like how fast are you doing each task so like if you are um, taking forever to make workers because you say center your vision on the command center and then you click it and then you press the button for workers like that's so much less expensive than just hitting one or whatever your command centers are bound to and just making workers that way so um, I get what you're saying here in the sense that theoretically or technically or whatever that the human brain can't multitask but play StarCraft a lot and just wait to the points where your brain is just automatically doing those things and you don't even have to think about it uh, and you'll see what I mean okay this person asks a pretty, uh, pretty uh, specific question. This is for a PvP. He says, if me and my opponent are going for both massive air balls of death, air balls of death, that should be the name of a band, what's the, what's some good late game tech to help me get an advantage? He went carrier tempest and erect all my void arrays. 
I mainly also put Void Rays in the Air Ball of Despair. Air Ball of Despair. A little less metal, but... Anyway, and destructive potential barreling through the fifth dimension. Damn, this guy's question. So what are some good supplements? P.S. Sorry for all the questions. Um, okay, so PvP late game is really weird. Um, for the most part, and this is the way I answer the question, is that Tempest and Storm is typically the best way to win these type of fights. Void Rays just die way too fast to Storm, and it's not going to be a viable option. And actually, the, the way the counter wheel works is that... Uh, Carriers kind of counter Void Rays, Void Rays kind of counter Tempest, and Tempest kind of counter Carriers. There's there's not any solid wheel there, but for the most part, when you get to that late in the game, the Storms are what really win out. And Tempest Storm will basically assure that you will do fine against ground armies, like big Stalker Balls or something, you can Storm them. Of course, that would be to a point where your army is so upgraded that the Stalkers wouldn't matter, and of course, Void Rays are going to be better against Stalkers anyway, and Carriers are going to be better against Stalkers anyway, but in the case where you're trying to counter Stargate versus Stargate tech, uh, Tempests usually do really well because they counter uh, Carriers. Carriers are awful against a lot of Tempests if you can just focus fire them, like select a group of maybe seven and just focus on one Carrier, just kill it in one hit. And this is probably all going to be fairly obsolete considering Legacy of the Void is going to come out anyway. But the long-winded way of what I'm trying to say is that the Tempests do well at zoning things out, so you can just pick stuff off. And if he approaches you, just throw down storms. Not too many, of course, but if he if he has a lot of Void Rays or whatever, they're going to get wasted by the storms. It's probably what happened to this guy. So, there you go. Hey, dude, I was wondering if you could give me some tips so that I could support or possibly carry a Zerg ally. I'm trying to get into silver so we look like we know how to work the game interesting vernacular, but uh, in team games, really there's two ways to do it. Number one, you either just have to be way better than your opponent, and you'll just win because you have more stuff, and that's basically how I answered this, because if you're trying to get into silver as teams, the, there's probably some deep, fundamental issues with the way you're just approaching the game. You're probably approaching the game more so in the sense of like, this is my strategy, and this is what I'm going to do, versus I just need to mine more and make more and bludgeon them to death with a bigger army. Which I could, I mean honestly, if I were to play a team game against lower ranked people, um, it's to the point where I can make so much money and I can spend on whatever I want that literally I can do any strategy and still win. Like even making 20 command centers and killing people with only ravens and dropping mules to mine out their bases. like. You could do that <laughs> against a lower league player if you just had the mindset of just making way more stuff than them. Um, obviously there are some caveats as far as knowing what they're doing, but if you really want to win team games, and if you really want to rank up in team games, team games are not balanced. Uh, you just want to use some really gimmicky, stupid strategies and just all in people and kill them. Uh, that's going to be what's the most, honestly, the most consistent way to win team games. Um, and the really popular ones in team games are things like Heli and Zergling. If you can find an efficient way to do that, that's really hard to deal with. Uh, Zergling Blinkstalker is okay. Uh, money dumps into like a whole bunch of Blinkstalkers or something like that is also decent. And by money dumps I just mean like one player has all the infrastructure and all the units and the other player is just paying them to make more stuff. Let me make sure I'm not making this video too long. Oh my god, this is getting really long. Whatever. Um, so yeah. Those are the two ways, I'd say. Either just try to make more stuff than them, or uh, just try to kill them with something gimmicky. Coincidentally enough, that's the end. Uh, let me make sure that it's showing up on there properly. So yeah, this is kind of a rough uh, way to do this, but basically I'm going to be doing this every week. I'm going to try to, and I'm going to snipe out questions from people that ask them on random comments. So they'll likely not be looking out for these videos, but if you specifically have questions for me, it could be about StarCraft, it can be about whatever, just post it down in the comments here and I'll put it in next week's video, unless it's something really random or something that I just can't put in a video for some reason, but uh, I, I want to kind of make these to make it seem like I'm, I'm the guy on your friends list that can answer questions for you, so if you have any questions, then definitely leave them down below. Okay, just want to make sure that this wasn't I'm just an idiot. So, uh, yeah, this will kind of be a weekly thing. Definitely let me know if you have any comments. Uh, I'll be back very soon with more videos, but considering we're kind of in a lull, it'll be a lot of these. So, 
Let me know if you have anything to talk about, and we'll talk about it. Uh, Legacy of the Void's on the way soon. I guess we'll see it soon, and I'll see you guys soon as well. So uh, take care, and thanks for watching and hanging out.